welcome back to Rhinoceros and Grasshopper Tutorials. I'm your host, Sakya Bazist, and today we will look at aliases in Rhinoceros 6. Now, if you want to take your game to the next level in modeling, you need to have a control over your aliases, or basically the shortcuts that makes you access commands very, very fast. So I'm just going to dive in. It's going to be really short, this tutorial. So what we want to look at is shortcuts enabling us to access commands. The first way that you can actually see that is to just type in options into your Rhino command line. This will bring up your window, and this is already showing me that, but if you want to find those aliases, we can just go down here, down the road to Rhino options, and then you can see that there's this aliases tab. Now, I already have some aliases assigned, but I have exported them, so I can now basically just restore them. Restore default will always set back your aliases list, so it will restore it to the state that it was provided by, let's say, Rhino 6 when you did downloaded it. So if I just do restore default, it will ask me, are you sure you want to do that? I will say yes, of course. I have a safe copy. Now, this is a list that comes with Rhino 6. If you have downloaded that, they already included some commands for this. And you can see that here are the aliases, the shortcuts that you can type into your keyboard and then how this command line has been accessed. So let's say a little micro script that actually launches that command. And you can see that we already have, let's say, move and planner auto, and we also have snap, but those are not really the commands that you use that often. Move, yes. So let's have a look quickly. Okay, we have seen that. I say, okay. I go to my perspective now, and what does that actually bring me? So I'm just gonna create a box, typing in box quickly, zero my origin, I um, have my grid snap on. If you don't have it on, don't worry, just press one for the X direction, one for the Y direction, and one for the Z direction, and you have created your box. Now, currently I am in my view wireframe. You just want to go to perspective, change it to shade it, so you can see actually the box a little better. Now, what I want to do is I just want to move that thing, right? And I ha I don't have my gumball on right now, so that will not make our life easier right now. So I have to actually type in the command move, right? So there are a couple of ways. You could go to this icon here to move it, or you can just type in move. Now, if I just type in move, I have to write it, basically, and it understands me, and I'm able now to move my object, right? Now, because we have set this alias to M, which I will show you in a second, I could just now type in M, this will trigger the command move. So if I just press M, it will launch the command move. As you can see here, I typed in M and that has a result of the command uh, or underscore move. And now I'm in the move command, okay? So this is how you can access those commands and we want to have a better control of that now. So if I go back to options, you can see that the way that you can actually do it now is quite easy. You can just assign your shortcuts, which are really custom to you, what you want to press, because sometimes it can be difficult to actually to press them. So this is really up to you what you are comfortable with. Let's, for instance, I want to change the C to be actually copy and not cell crossing, because copy is something that I really use often. And I want that to be understood by Rhino to launch copy, not cell crossing. Now, the way that I would do it now is either I would go here, just double click here. I have the C set. I can go here, then behind the underscore, I will just write copy. And it's my habit to write the first letter in a capital, but that is just a good habit and I would just ask you to do it. And I have now just changed that. I say okay. And now if I press C, it will launch copy. And I can now just you know, select my object, enter, and then just start to copy my objects, right? So if I go back to my options, and I would say restore default, so I change whatever I did. I will ask me, of course, yes, I want to change it. I say okay, and if I press C now, it will do drag a window to select objects, and it will do a cell crossing, basically which is, like I said, again, not the one command that I think of if I press C. So if we go back to options, now let's say you have, you're working in the office, etc., and you have already a list in that office that is available for you. You have a shortcut list, and basically it's just literally a text file. Understands and reads as a text file. So what you have as options, you can either export 
your given alias list. So let's say you spend hours and hours to really customize that alias list and you have the most efficient shortcuts for you set and you want to export them now. So you can do that by just hitting that export button right here. And I'm just going to do a test export. I mean, it's literally the default settings, but just to show you, just going to press export and then it's going to launch a browser, a pop-up window. It will ask you, where do you want to export it? So I will just go to, let's say my desktop and I will just sign in number two. Yeah. But before we do that, actually, or let me just do it and I will overwrite that then. I'm going to say hit save and it will say, hey, 21 aliases exported to file and the location. And I say, OK, what I can do now to test it, actually, is I'm going to create a new shortcut. Now we can take any command that we want to do right now. The one thing that I want to show you maybe is going to be the scale option. So I'm just going to go to new and it will start up with new and I'm going to say S1. So you can also type in numbers and assign my scale one D to that. So I say, okay. And now if I press S one in the shortcut, as you can see here, press enter and it will launch the command scale one D. So I hit that command and I do my magic, right? So I can now scale that thing S one and I can scale that thing again and continue on uh, with that command and a really fast way otherwise i would literally have to type in scale and then i will hope that i get the right one of those how many are there six options yeah that is one thing so i go back to options and actually the first thing that you want to do is actually bring up the options as a shortcut right because you don't want to type in options the whole time so i'm just going to do new and i'm going to say um op is going to be allocated to options, right? So I say, okay. And every time I want to launch my options now, I just press OP and I'll get to my options tab. So you already see the magic of the shortcuts and the more shortcuts you have and the better you have uh, memorized them, you will start to be like a virtuoso in Rhino and just like being crazily uh, efficient. And uh, people are going to look at you strange because they just listen to your keyboards acting. So. Let's continue on and let's say, okay, I have, I'm ready for this. I export them again and we're going to import them to actually see that we have the same settings. So please remember the one thing that, or the two things that we did is to add scale one D as S one and to add options as OP. So I'm going to say export again. I'm going to find my, my location that I used before, and I'm going to overwrite my settings too. Now it will ask me, Hey, are you sure that you want to overwrite them? And I will say, yes, please replace it. I'm happy with that. Okay. Now what we can do is to test that. I will say restore default. Do you want to continue? Yes. Now my few adjustments are deleted. And what I can do now is to say, I will import my shortcut list. So I will say import this time. And again, I have to find the right location. I remember it was here, aliases two settings. I say, yep. I will say, hey, 21, uh, 23 aliases found, 23 imported, okay. And if you don't have the same aliases, sometimes it happens that if you have the same names, it will ask, hey, there's already the letter M, for instance, included. Should I overwrite that? And that's an up to you. Usually I just say yes to all and it will just overwrite that list to that list that you have imported, which makes uh, no sense maybe now, but it will make later. And as you can see, I've done that now. And my two adjustments are shown in the bottom of this list, basically. So I can see, OK, this has worked now. Of course, there are many shortcut lists out there and I would always advise you to actually import one and to see if that is if that is suited to you. But what I found interesting is to actually just go in here and spend some time and just to do it myself actually and write my own shortcut list. So if I would import another one, for instance, uh, one that I am working currently on right now with my uni course is um, alias is setting one. I say, okay. And here you see, what I was talking about, so it has found the letter M that it already exists and it wants to ask me if I want to replace it. 
if, if I press yes, it will jump to the next one and I don't want to press yes for 43 times. So I will say yes to all and it will say, okay, now you have 45 aliases found. And now I can see, okay, what is there for me? And I can see I have, for instance, mirror already assigned. I have rotated, rotate 3D, etc., etc. Now, that is, I hope till now, quite understandable for you. Let's say I want to say array linear. I could now press A1. And I don't have to type in A1 or A capital here. I can just press A1 and it will already launch my command and I can continue on and, uh, you know, just array it. Now, the cool thing actually is that you can even go a little bit more deeper into this logic of typing in those macros for commands. So you could also access sub built in commands from a command. And I'm going to show it to you with using the fillet method. Now for that, I just need to draw two lines quickly, one line like so, one like, like so, and I want to fillet that corner, let's say. And I'm working on a project and I just need to fillet everything by one. It is that project that I just have right now and everything, it's like 100 objects, whatever, and I always have to fillet it with one. Now I could, of course, launch fillet if I have to First of all, I have to type it and hope it finds fillet unknown. So I have to, you know, make him understand I want fillet. And then I have to, maybe radius is currently set to default zero. I have to go in here and press one. And now I can, you know, do my command. Now, there is a clever way to actually do that. So if I press again, options. Okay, do I have that assigned? I do have that assigned. So if I now look at my list and see if I can find fillet, if it's not there, it's perfect. Now, what you can see is that some of those little uh, command macros, as you can see here, aliases and the command macros, some are pretty simple. They have like one kind of line and some have a second underscore behind them. And this enables you to actually run down the command line deeper and deeper into the subcomponents. So for instance, if I want to set my fillet with always a radius of one, I could do that by simply saying new F zero, or let's say F one, if that is not assigned. Actually, I already have it. I'm seeing it here. So maybe we just do it again, but this time we just take then um, two. Yeah. So we have that. So I will just press F one. That's going to be my fillet for the radius two, sorry, because I already have that and it's um, just going to be efficient if I do it again. I say underscore fillet, make sure that my first letter is capital. You don't, I think you don't have to do it, but I mean, it's okay. What you wanna do now is just hit the space button, do another underscore, type in radius, and then space, and you type in two. Now, this formatting will bring you the and you press OK, so OK. And what I can do now is actually press F1. Yeah, it will launch that fillet command. And as you can see, the radius is already assigned to be two. So now I can just, you know, type in that. And I always have this as a default setting. So every time I press F1, it goes down the rabbit hole of the command. And actually, if you can see what's been happening here in the command line, if I pull that out, I have pressed F1. The first thing it does is it says, okay, he wants the command fillet. And the second thing he does is he already assigns the radius to B2. And now I can just continue on with my command. So now, I mean, you can really understand that as you can make it more complex. You can, of course, have more and more sub commands that you actually access to just putting in more space underscore and whatever you want to access there. But it really helps you also if you just use normal commands, like let's say um, I want to move and I want to move always in the vertical. So I would just go here. I created this new one right now. So MV move and then type in vertical and I say, okay. And now I want to create a box to actually test that. And if I do so and I press MV, it will say unknown, but I can still select it, enter and vertical is still no, right? Okay, it didn't work, but actually it does work. You just have to select that object and you press MV 
And then it will do the same thing. It will identify, hey, he wants to move that guy and he wants to have that to be moved vertical, right? So for everyone who is actually quite new to or already works with Rhino, you know that for move vertical, you have to first trigger move. You select that object and then you have to identify here always to toggle that vertical or you could just type in B to have the same effect. Now with that, you just select that object, you press every and you are ready to go. Okay, so that concludes our video with the aliases, but really take your time to understand this logic and to customize your list. It will help you insanely so much that you can't even imagine it right now. And I hope you like this video. Please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really helps me and see you in the next tutorial. Thank you a lot. Bye.